Hi there. Um, I'm just about to cut open this head cast. I cast this from Lord Colin Moynihan a couple of months ago now and I'm just about to start working on producing his head. And um, what I did at the time is, as, as with usual, I cast the front and the back of his head separately. So that's in two halves. I don't know if you can see that. And then once the cast came off Colin, I then reinforced it and I also put some drawing around the edges. So th because as the plaster dries, um, with, uh, as with a lot of sculpture materials, it warps slightly, it, it moves, it changes slightly. And if you've got a two piece mould and you can keep it together while it's drying, then it's more likely to fit together. I've got a retractable blade. I don't know if that's long enough, I hope that's long enough. Um, and I'm just going to go through and cut open. It's very hard to tell on these until you've put the clay in and they come out how the final piece is going to look. Um, there's a good chance that this one, when it comes out, isn't going to be that happy looking because Colin's, I think, out of a lot of people I've cast, he's one of the people who um, least enjoyed it. And, oh, and so I suspect that it's not going to have a happy expression on the face. Um, it's not such a problem for me because I, before I was head casting, I was a, I was a modelling sculptor, so I can I've got some very nice pictures of Colin that I can use to work to make it look more like him, and uh, because he's a he's a very positive, cheerful person, so I don't want it looking that bad. Um, so this is the inside. As you can see, there's not a huge amount of detail. One of the reasons why I tend to cast um, mainly using plaster bandage and not using alginate. I do cast with alginate. You can see uh, um, other videos of that. But um, it's because when you cast with alginate, it gives you a level of detail. Let me show you this. This is the hand of a soldier, Lance Corporal of the horse. Pull. Can you see the detail? Incredible detail. Thing is, when you're working with something that comes out as beautifully cast and as detailed as that, particularly if it's someone's head, I find it actually quite difficult to cut and slice in as I have, say, with this piece. And what I'm really interested in when I'm working with somebody is getting this shape getting this neck to shoulder proportions of the head and having that like my blank canvas so that I can then carve into the surface. And what I found is if, if I have a very, very detailed, um, accurate copy of somebody, it's really hard to carve into, but I also find that I adapt my design then to fit around the parts of the face that I want showing. And sometimes that works, but I want these things to look like they are, um, uh, like armour, they're like they're like the shell around somebody as opposed to being the real person carved into and um, redesigned, so that's why I work like this. Even so, um, I mean if you go back through past videos of mine you'll notice that even so, when I've put the clay in these things and they've come off, there is enough detail to give you quite a good sense of somebody's expression. Um, some casts come out and they're really breathtakingly realistic. Others, depending on whether the person's moved their face within it, it sort of slightly changed. Sometimes if someone's got pretty hairy eyebrows um, when I'm casting them, I don't press and it, it doesn't, they don't stay down with the Vaseline. I don't press the plaster in too hard in that area because with a, a client or a famous person, um, I really don't want to be sort of like catching their eyebrows and pulling them out. So I'm very careful about that. I mean, with friends, friends suffer, I'm afraid. Not always. 
Um, but it's it's to do with there's a lot of things that can affect it, but mainly what I want is those proportions so I can get and work on. And what I'll do is in a, in a little while I'll video the clay going into here so you can see me joining it together. Goodbye.